Welcome to the Gordon Rocket Company studio. Joining me today is Natalie. Hi, thank you for having me, David. This is your first time taking a look at a rocket stove, is that true? Correct. And what, do you th what are your thoughts so far? At first glance, they seem convenient and portable, and I'm curious to see the benefits of having those while camping. One of, a couple of the things that are um, interesting from a camping standpoint, what I've noticed is that you don't have to have a bunch of rocks already set up. You think, oh, this has got to go in the campsite campfire? Not at all. This one actually I've put on a picnic table. And even just sitting on a picnic table, it is very self-contained. The fire is inside. The dampers shut things down and keep things very contained. So it's really quite safe. So these can be placed on any surface? Yes. On a wood surface, you might want to put something under it, and I've got like a square of metal to put under it. So, David, explain to me how the components fit together. Mm. Yeah, that's what's been really interesting in the development, is that as I built it, I kept coming across different ways to optimize the cooking. This is where it started, with putting a pan simply on there. Before that, I thought, well, it's just going to be a good heating device. Well, now, we have this area where we can, in fact, put a pot. I hear some water boiling, boiling in yeah, there Yeah, right it's now. quick. <laughs> yeah. No, it's almost instantaneous. Um, the heat transfer between the metal and the metal seems almost faster than a, a conventional stove. Right. The interesting thing is, if you look in there, you oh, wow. see how it's pulled in. The yeah. fire is literally pulled through it and that's based on the chimney having that basic chimney effect like the one in your house. A billowing effect. Yeah, it is. It's like having a billows where you're pumping air into this thing. So but how long did you have fire in here um, for it to heat to this level? How um, long did that take? Not long. Um, it starts up quicker than most campfires because it's contained because the air again is channeled. It's like you're blowing on your fire the whole time. Right. So yeah, it's quick. Um, the components that came to mind then were to put the grill on top and then below we have an oven. So you could have biscuits and gravy while you're camping. Indeed. <laughs> That's the idea. And sausage cooking on the top. Oh yeah. So we really have three levels. All pieces of your meal going at one time. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Cool. So that's that was the idea, that was the original concept, and it's really worked out. So David, there are obviously three different styles here. Mm -hmm. Why don't you explain to me the benefits of each one? This is the original. This one is steel. Now this is the first one I came up with. The one drawback is, well, it's rather heavy. It works really well though if you're going to permanently put it in your yard or um, on a patio. It has that chiminea effect, so there's plenty of heat coming off of it. Um, along those lines, it's relatively safe. I mean, consider an open fire pit. With children around, you'd have a real concern. This, well, hey, somebody could get a burn, but they're not gonna get incinerated. <laughs> not quite the way to put it. <laughs> incinerated child for lunch, anyone? <laughs> Anyways. You know, you might get, someone might get a burn, but you're really not going to get a dangerous situation. Again, this is the original. It's made of steel. The performance uh, is excellent, but it runs a little heavy. A lot of people looked at that and said, hey, I want to take that camping. So, this was next. This is the Mini Aluminum GR2. So essentially the same components as this one, except lighter and more portable. Yeah. You see this, the grill comes off. We call okay. that the Gorilla. You could just slip that in your backpack. Uh, pretty much. And then this slips right there. Oh, nice. So all of them have that aspect. They fold up pretty small. And then if one were taking it somewhere, that guy jumps in about like that, and you end up with a very small package. Portable. One hopes. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, as you see, yes, it does come apart into its different components. This guy goes here. Simple enough. And there we are. So this looks like mama bear, if this is <laughs> papa and baby. <laughs> I never thought of it that way, but you're absolutely right. And it is a compromise between the two, just like in the Goldilocks story. This one's a little too heavy, that one's a little too light, and well, hopefully this one's just right. This is the GR3. We've got the GR1 original, the GR2, and then I did the compromise just like you mentioned. It's much lighter weight. It also will feature an oven, just like this one. And then on top we have the grill. Nice. So it has the three cooking zones as well. So this might be more appropriate for, say, tailgating at a football game. Absolutely. <laughs> It'd be wonderful for that. So, David, explain to me this aspect of the rocket stove. This is the damper, and it prevents any wood from falling out, which is pretty rare, but it can happen. The damper also can be used to close down the airflow, so that causes it to restrict a little more. It can help accelerate the airflow and increase the rocket effect. Now, interesting is that you'll see that there's very little or no smoke coming out of it. Right. And that's a very important thing. Because we have such efficient combustion, and actually we have sort of an inferno on the inside of this, it burns not only the wood, but the smoke that we typically see. Basically, it vaporizes the wood, burns at a much hotter temperature, and it makes it for a wonderful grill up top. So if you were taking, for instance, the GR2 camping, you would even have to bring um, less wood with you. It's efficient in that aspect as well. Absolutely. You know, it's said that they're about seven to ten times more efficient. It's like a very uh, well-tuned Franklin stove. You know those old pot belly ones? Yeah. Well, those would have this same effect at their optimum. Other stoves can too. These are just channeled and in, a, in a, a minimized size and design so they're portable and again giving us the three different cooking areas. Okay. Be careful when you're touching that I'm sure. You wouldn't <laughs> yeah. want to burn yourself. <laughs> well, you know we went with these old style springs and they work quite well for keeping these within a reasonable temperature. Hmm. The interesting thing is that these stoves burn at a very high temperature, uh, very efficient combustion, and actually vaporizes the wood. So pulled out, this could increase the airflow, but if pushed all the way in, could essentially extinguish your fire. It will do that. If you need to put the thing out quickly, that's one way to oh, do it. But not now. Not now. <laughs> We're making coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and smoke. So actually having just pulled it back out, it let the airflow come back in. You can hear the roar, that rocket sound, and the smoke stops up top. You can see the heat waves coming off though, mm -hmm. and so they're quite effective and the coffee's uh, almost ready. Good. <laughs> Cup please. <laughs> Lunchtime, David. What do we have on the grill? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's about 10 minutes later now, and we've had a chance to let things warm up. We've got a good bank of coals on the inside, too. The fire is all through the chamber. That provides tremendous heat at the top. And, as you can see... Sear marks. There we go. Things are cooking. And what we'll get from the hickory chips is a nice flavor on this but not too much smoke. In fact, it seems to be that the, the smoke sort of recondenses on the meat. So it's a real like woodsy flavor. I can smell it. <laughs> I bet you can. <laughs> and actually we see a little bit more smoke coming off now because that's actually the, the meat smoke. In those brief moments when we don't see a drip, um, there's very little smoke. So after cooking a few times on the grill, right. what's the difficulty of cleaning? It's much different because it burns so hot. Once again, we don't get the buildup of grease on the inside. Now, a little bit of the uh, grease from the meat will drip down in it, but typically it burns right off. It actually adds to the heat, and um, we just don't get much buildup at all. But now we nice. are cooking. Lunch is <laughs> served at 2 o'clock, kids.
Here we go. <laughs> it's looking good. And again, one of the things that's so different about this grill is that it's self-cleaning. The oil drips down inside and you get a little spit, you get a little uh, a whiff of smoke comes out, but that's about it. Fantastic. Well, we'll see. First thing next. So there we have it. While we've been cooking on the top, we've also got the lower part here too. And guess what? Eggs. What types of skillets can one use on this stove? Are any any kind safe or just yeah. the iron skillet? You can use any kind. Um, I prefer cast iron. It works well with the steel. So I really like what you've done here. The efficiency of the wood burning mm -hmm. with the lack of smoke yeah. coming from the stove. It is extraordinary, isn't it? Yes, the three different components for cooking food. Yeah. Um, outdoor cooking made easy and safe and efficient. That's pretty much it. You know, I think one of the things that drove me to develop it is to have it be wood fired. So you can use the wood chips like we're using. These are maple. And, or you can fire these things with the wild materials. Pine cones, for instance, are fantastic. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to learn more about the Gordon Rocket Stove. Well, I really appreciate you coming out. We've had an opportunity to look at how the grill works with the lamb. Uh, great results with the eggs on the stove. Fantastic. Thanks for joining us today. Indeed. Thanks for coming out to the Gordon Rocket Company studio and having a look at our different products. We'll look forward to seeing you in the future.